Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, this is the second video, y'all. We already did a video earlier, and we did that video, y'all. It turns out it just didn't work out the way it was supposed to. So we apologize. I apologize. We apologize to y'all for that. However, however, given notifications. So we're going to go over each of these so y'all can know what y'all need to know. But for right now, we're going to go over this one to the business oversight department. Like I said, I already did the video. So we just going to do is we just going to play it because they ain't, it make no sense for me to do it again, y'all. That make no sense. So open up video. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we got a little bit of Mr. McGraw and Mr. Nelly, and they're singing a song that when I first heard it, I'm like, this is all right. Okay, so I'm going to let Nelly, broken teeth and all, just kidding now, um, and Tim, Explain to you guys about how it's all in his head and he keeps thinking about it over and over again. I mean, keeps playing it over and over again. He can't take it. He can't take it, you know, so he's going to be singing that in the background. Hey, got some information we want to share with y'all now. I'm going to let Nelly play. The only problem is I made a mistake, ladies and gentlemen. I show what I'm going to do. Uh, nope, can't do it that way. Dad Nabbit, how do I explain to you what my mistake was? Let me tell y'all what the mistake was. I was supposed to have the document already pulled up. Shut up. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you what the mistake was. I didn't edit the document. And I wanted to show y'all the document. And I'm even going to say in there that I ain't going to show y'all the other documents. Well, I'm going to show you the other documents now. That video was 30 minutes long. This video is going to be about 40 minutes long, 45 minutes long. If it goes over that, y'all just understand that I'm tired. I'm supposed to be laying down right now and getting some rest. This is Friday, and this is my day, and I heard you say, why they do me like that? I should have repent. Somebody should have said the special ed is magnificent. I am the magnificent. I'm sorry, special ed. Anyway, but this information I think is important, so that's why I'm going through all of this. So I'm going to refer to a couple of things. Just know that. If you were to do the research on securitization trustee, when it pops up securitization trustee, no, this ain't the one for securitization trustee. Oh, this is the one for securitization trustee. Okay, so when it pops this screen up, I'll be showing you this definition here. See this one? See that one? Show you that definition for securitization trustee and this definition for securitization trustee. Okay, so before it happens i'm letting you know what's gonna happen i'm predicting the future <laughs> you're so great okay so hold on please we're going to talk about this letter but we're going to talk about securitization trustee first so i'm getting everything ready for y'all y'all ready all right let's roll all right you can keep Here talking that's all you guys are okay All right, ladies and gentlemen, made my corrections, and we're going to let Nelly play for just a moment, but we all going to let this uh, recording go ahead and explain to you guys what we're doing. The first thing we need to do is explain to you guys what's going on, because some of you, sorry, some of you are not getting it. So we're going to open up this one right here. This is uh, where we're doing a simple search for the... Um, the California Business Oversight, Department of Business Oversight. This is the SEC for the state of California. In other words, this is California's version of the SEC. All right? So let's do this so that you guys will understand something because I promise you, if you pay attention, you will learn something. I guarantee it. Are you sure? Because the last video, I mean, I didn't learn anything other than the fact that the police, they, you know, some of them are racist, some of them are mean, some are idiots, and then some of them are actually trying to do a good job, but we need the police. See, that's all I, but, you know, okay, I guess I did learn something. Anyway, 
Wake up. Securitization trustee hyphen definition. Stop listening. Voice recognition. Ladies and gentlemen, a security trustee is a person or an institution who holds securities and trust for a syndicate of creditors in a financial transaction like a securitization. There are a number of persons or reasons why debtors may choose to use a trust for raising capital or other types of finance transactions. Now this is from wise geeks. I don't trust them, you guys. I don't care how wise they think they is. Hold on, hold on, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. I have to interrupt me because I didn't even pick it up while I was doing the video. Pay attention. There are a number of reasons why debtors may choose to use a trust for raising capital or other types of finance transactions. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Somebody else has agreed with me that you are an investor. You're trying to raise capital to pay off your stupid note. Pay attention, I did not write this. I didn't even get it when I first read it until I was looking at it. And I'm like, wait a minute, where the debtors may choose to use a trust, securitization trustee for raising capital and other types of finances. I would actually, what is a security trustee? I would go and look at these wise yeeks, okay? Or is it WYSIGIC? WYSIGIC. I will go and look at them people and see what they got going on. All right, thank you, Wise Geek. Even though I say I don't trust y'all, I still don't trust you. Hold on. Securitization is a financial practice of pooling various types of contractual debt, such as residential mortgages, commercial mortgages, auto loans, credit cards. Oh, look at that. They securitize all of these things. Credit card debt obligations. Now remember, debt obligations are United States obligations. They're public. Your debt is a public debt. Shh, don't tell nobody. We're not talking about that right now. But let's go. The selling their related cash flows to third party investors. Okay? As securities. Nelly, it's all in your head, but we're going to pause y'all, okay? because he just wanted y'all to know it was just all in his head. You know, I mean, you know, he, he didn't he didn't touch that woman. It was just, in, it was in his head, not hers. It was in his head. Just kidding. This Love Is Finally Come At Last is one of my favorite songs by Patty, and she's singing with Bobby Womack. So we're gonna let them sing in the background while I finish reading about flows to third party investors as securities, which may be described as bonds. Wait, 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 which may be described as bonds, pass through securities and collateralized debt obligations. Investors are repaid from the principal and the interest cash flow collected from the underlying debt and redistributed through their capital structure for new financing. Wait, securities backed by mortgage receivables are called mortgage backed securities. While those backed by other types of receivables are called asset-backed securities. Ladies and gentlemen, please understand, when we ask the lender, who is the securitization trustee? You don't realize, as you've been told from day one by me, that you are the number one investor in that security. They're trading your property on the market. There is nothing in the agreement which gives them the right to trade your property except you're allowing it if you are hold on now you're going way too fast you got to show people what you're talking about before you just start talking all right i'm not going to tell you that no more uh ladies and gentlemen there are a number of reasons why debtors may choose to use a trust for raising capital or other type of finance transactions so Ladies and gentlemen, this is a SATCOM member calling, so I got to put y'all on pause. All right. As you all know, what happens is we, when the SATCOM members call me, I'm obligated to take their calls. Why? Because they're talking about the people who are communicating with SATCOM or something in the organization to make things run smoother. And that's, I give them my attention. So I apologize. 
So y'all just hold on as we continue to discuss these points. Okay? Okay. Allowing it, where is your, pay attention, where's your benefit? What you don't understand, ladies and gentlemen, so let me highlight it for you. Ladies and gentlemen, when they trade your mortgage on the market, get out of here, 360. When they trade your mortgage on the market, securities backed by mortgage receivables are called mortgage-backed securities. What do they do? Well, they collect from the principal. You see, the investors are repaid. You are one of the investors from the principal and the cash flow collected from the underlying debt and redistributed through the capital structure of the new financing. Please understand, you are to be receiving cash flow from the receivables and the interest that's supposed to be applied to your mortgage. That's why you're allowing them to trade your mortgage or your property on the market. They don't have the right to trade your debt. They don't have the right to profit off of your debt. What do you mean they don't have the right? Because it's not a debt. You don't owe them a debt. It's not a debt. It's not a debt until it's six months past due. Then it's classified as a debt. Prior to that, it's classified as a balance. Okay? Don't let them call it a debt obligation, people. You're not obligated under that contract. Your contract was the original agreement known as the loan agreement. The promissory note and the loan are two different documents. These are two different processes, two different avenues. You apply for a loan, they gave you a loan. You'll see in a minute, I'm gonna prove this to you again. But I'm going to let you guys, and sorry, I'm not making no templates for y'all because y'all going to have to do some work. I'm tired of doing all this sweating and tearing and crying and whining and dining and all this other stuff, and y'all ain't doing nothing but just sitting up and watching the video. No, y'all going to do some work. Just like that, that nurse, I forgot, I believe her name was Mary. I don't know, quite contrary or something like that. I believe her name was Mary. But she told me, oh, no, uh-uh. You done took that tube out of your mouth? Oh no, you gonna work. Hold on now. Before I tell you all that story, her name was Tracy. See, I ain't lost all my marbles just yet. It's a long time ago, but she left an impression on me. Plus, I cried in front of her. I don't do too much crying in front of people. As a matter of fact, that was probably the first time in my life that I cried in front of a woman. Okay, so her name was... Tracy. Okay, so here you go. Uh uh, uh uh, you ain't dying on me. I'm gonna make you know you gonna work. And I promise you guys, I have never been through so much exhaustion and pain and agony than having to breathe through that stupid little tube, making that ball bounce up and down. Okay, that was horrific, but she made me work. If I didn't, I had, she knew, she knew by taking that tube out of my mouth and sitting up without the doctors being there and then laying back down, she knew that by my laying back down that that valve that shuts the, your, what do you call it? I don't know, ventricular, that little tube that goes all the way down to your stomach and then also splits off into the lungs, there's a valve that closes automatically when you're drinking water and then opens when you're breathing. Like so Valvoline. You breathe not breathe. So you can't drink water and breathe at the same yes, time. Yes, you so can. I know you done tried it. I done tried it. You're doing so because you end up getting water in your lungs. I ain't That's stupid. What I, got. I got water in my lungs. You got water on the lungs? I got pneumonia. Pneumonia? Because that valve, when you took that tube, mm -mm -mm. stayed open. Mm -mm. Sure did. So if I was drinking water, I'd have to do it sitting up, not lying down. You don't drink water lying and down? I got water in the lungs, so I caught pneumonia. That's why I can tell you. I understand the people who caught pneumonia, who had pneumonia, who's been... Well, tell them to slow down. Pneumonia. I understand how difficult of a thing that is to deal with, especially if you're older. Because they don't have to deal with it if they just let it go. You ain't got to catch it. You can let it go. Yes, and I didn't have no walking pneumonia. I had pneumonia of a severe degree. 
You had the severe pneumonia, the hurt. lying down. And they didn't have no anesthesia. There was no pain reliever that too. Oh, you hurt. had running pneumonia. So took it out. Anyway, took it out. Let's get back to this video. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to get back, y'all. talk about this letter. We're sending it to this the letter right here. Oversight Bureau. I want you guys to pay attention to what's in the letter. Pay attention. Pay attention. We're going to let the natural reader read it for us. To this buddy right here. Business Oversight, DBO, ETL. From the names of your clients. ETL stands for etc. All. Securities law violations. Internal reference number CA0800. He gonna keep talking. 14. We're following a complaint using our form. To whom it may concern. The properties located at your address or addresses for your properties, both for purchase from private homeowners by private homeowners without the attachment of a mortgage. Initially, these properties were purchased as a result of two separate individual loans from JP Morgan Chase, Deutsche Bank Financial Institutions, respectively. The properties were acquired without the security of collateral attachment, based on credit score. Most people are unaware that when they apply for a loan, the qualification is not based on collateral attachment of a home for which they have not yet acquired, but based on their credit at the time of the application. We agreed, as so many others do, to allow the financial institutions to invest our property in the market by trading it as a mortgage-backed security, placing our homes as collateral, which could only have been done after the purchase, which is prima facie the evidence that the home could not be collateral for the loan as has been presumed and slash or assumed, for the risk of trading our property on the market. In exchange for the financial institutions applying all of the interest and dividends due us, to the loan received, as evidenced by the mortgage, and any remaining balance was to be credited back to our account. To this very day we have not received what was promised, yet our properties continue to be traded on the market, and now they're claiming that they are owed, or obligators for a debt of more than we agreed to be responsible for. These financial institutions have received tax credits, have violated the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act, and the consumer protection laws for the state of California by not applying these credits to our account, offsetting the debt which makes this good nice of all as securities, insurance, and financial fraud, if I understand the statutes correctly. These financial institutions are regulated with respects to the trading of securities both on the state level as well as federally. This is a securities matter, involving our interests, our properties for which we are investors. We believe that several securities laws have been violated, and that there has been an actual conspiracy constructively to defraud us. These securities are traded by institutions and slash or organizations regulated by your organization, and we must now request you halt and slash or call the security associated with our property S, and we must request as we have the right to have a full audit done respecting the securitization of the accounts. We believe you call this a margin call. You see by allowing them to continue to trade this on the market where we have a vested interest, where it is documented that we are the trust interest holders, where there is an actual legitimate complaint filed without ordering a complete audit and accounting would amount to denial of due process and equal protection of law and access to government. As you will see by the agreement for allowing our properties to be traded on the market, we are included as investors, or trust interest holders, TIH, our properties are listed with the county recorder and the tax assessor as an income property. Yet we are not receiving the benefits of this but we are paying the taxes on the income property and the fact that we are not receiving the benefits of such trading is in violation of the agreement. Attorneys have somehow acquired an interest in our properties, and have somehow attempted to file suit or bring forth the claim of an intention to file suit in violation of state statute. I'm about to pause this in a second and explain things to y'all, but I'm going to explain about the attorney thing in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, the document is called a complaint. The reason why it is called a complaint, it's called a complaint for a reason. See, normally these companies have their own complaint form. We're giving them our complaint form. Our, not our, well, like what hour today it is. No, our, like you and us, me and you, we together, together forever, never, ever. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, contains all of the things and then some their complaint form requires, like your address. They want an uh, email and telephone number. <laughs> Give me you no know, email and no telephone number. Uh -uh, I'm sending this to you in the mail so you can't email or call me. We going to document everything. Everything. California Business and Profession Stop. Code. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get back to the California Business Code in a second. Make sure you understand something because it's necessary that we give you the understanding. If you hear me breathing like that that's me trying to catch my breath while trying to talk because there are some times during the day where it is difficult for me to breathe especially this time during winter and spring the changing from winter to spring uh, and i just came from outside windows down and i was playing my ray charles you know georgia 
Oh, I said now, Joy, all oh, of Georgia, you know, that that Ray Charles. Well, I pulled up to Lucky's. I told you I hate going to Lucky's, but I need to get me some sniggity snacks. And so I said, I'm going to go to Lucky's. I don't feel like going to Walmart. That's 20 miles away. So I went to Lucky's. Told y'all I hate going to Lucky's, but I went there. And I'm playing my Ray Charles because I'm enjoying myself on the way there. And I get inside the stove, putting my little headset in and so I can listen to the rest of Ray Charles in my ear because I use my cell phone as my radio. Y'all don't know about that. Well, anyway, this little elderly white woman, and I'm going to call her white because we know ain't no such thing as no white person. But anyway, this little elderly white woman came up to me, says, excuse me. This ain't, I ain't making this up. This happened today. She said, excuse me, who was that you were playing? Was that Louis Armstrong? I said, no, that's Ray Charles, and that's him singing Georgia on my mind. She says, that is the song me and my husband had played on our wedding, and that brings back so many memories. Do you have it on CD? How can I get it? I said, no, don't worry. That's just the live version. In my opinion, that's the best version of the song. It's the live version where he did it in front of an orchestra. Ladies and gentlemen, when I tell you, when I drive and I play my music, other people get to enjoy my music with me. They ain't got to listen to no cursing. No, no, no. I'm going to take you back. Like she said, it took her back. So those of you who don't like my music, when I play my music, <laughs> y'all can kiss my grits. I'm sorry, she, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's Flo from Alice. If y'all don't remember the TV show Alice, y'all ain't old enough to be watching my videos. I'm just gonna tell it to you like it is. So by telling y'all that little story, let's go back and tell you this story. Ladies and gentlemen, when you're doing your mortgages, when you are challenging these idiots, you all, in my opinion, I promise you, this is my opinion. I don't give my opinion often. Oh, you give your opinion all the time. No, I don't. I just state the facts. Facts are not opinions. That's all I you do. You guys need to understand the difference. Just need to understand. When I give my opinion, I'm going to tell you it's my opinion. And I'm going to tell it to you. I'm going to back it up with tons of facts. But tons. this opinion, I can back up with facts. It's mine. I think we've been going after these idiots the wrong way. I think it. I think we've been bringing up the wrong issues. Somebody said I something about securitization audits and how people have successfully won with securitization Who audits. Who cares? Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. Pay attention. Securitization audits. I need you all to pay attention to what's going on. The people who foreclose on your home is securitization trustee. Securitization they trustee. They on behalf of the investors. When your property is involved in mortgage-backed security, they're doing, you're one of the investors. You are. But you didn't realize that. You didn't. But you're going to realize it after the you course better. of this video. In California, and you Cali. all might have it in your state. Going so back you're going to. So you to get the code in a second. Take that code and look for a similar code in your state by doing a cross-reference. That's all you have to do. do it. That's your job. Your I'm job, not mine. I'm research for you. I'm not uh, going to. People are texting me, emailing me, calling all me, of that asking stuff. me how to do something. I Go ain't got no time. Your tutor. Not at I'm not all. I'm not here to tell you, teach you, or walk you through anything. Not going to do okay? it. You Just simply not going to do it. Then you're it, gonna it wouldn't be prudent. So you're going to pay. How do I get a consult with Eon? You want to talk about TDAs and treasuries and the hour sell money order? Then you can't talk to me. because you, you can't. That I would not have those conversations. Made a promise. Made a promise a long time ago. Made a so promise. You YouTube, how to get a consult with Eon. To better YouTube. Eon will talk about him, what he won't talk about. Maybe right? he won't. Because that's just the way it is. That's, that's the way it is. it is. Okay. Let's get back to this. Did you know that if an attorney is invested in your property? On not just level, an attorney, y'all. attorneys. Every attorney. They not most. Know, buy stock into your property they buy that's it why they foreclose because they want to collect they want to collect y'all they got to get paid california as in other states it's against the law for them to do that it's against it y'all it's a okay. mr mariner but that's okay we're going to talk about that in a minute you notice how i tell them this is a securities issue a securities matter that's right i'm letting them know before they tell me that they don't do this or they don't do that oh no you do this because we're talking about securities 
and we're talking about somebody falsely reporting securities. We're talking about somebody who is not reporting securities according to the way the law says they're to report securities. Oh, yeah, you deal with this. That's what we're taking care of in the beginning, knocking it out the park. The reason why we explain how a mortgage is and how the actual trading of it on the market has nothing to do with the agreement. See, just because I buy a car from you does not give you the right to trade our agreement on the market. Just because. Because you're making a profit off profit. of my property. My property. Because we share that property together. We share you it, me and the lender. Profit off of my property. Now profit. And you coming to an agreement, but we have an agreement. We have the mortgage stocks. You gave us power of attorney. You're absolutely right. You're 100% right. And that's where we get value and consideration because without value and consideration, no contract can be said to be valid. So you have the value. Where's my consideration? You have the value. You're able to trade it on a Hold on, y'all. Let me help y'all out so y'all can understand what's going on in that conversation right there. He's talking about value and consideration. What type of value and consideration? Well, they're claiming they have a contract with you that you signed an agreement allowing them to do this and do that. And you go, you're absolutely right. You're right. I did sign. I agree with you that I did sign an agreement. So where is my cut? What are you talking about? Where's my cut? We had an agreement. An agreement is a contract. That's another word for a contract. Well, if we have an agreement and you're trading my property on the market, I'm one of the investors. Where is my cut? Because I need to apply that to the so-called debt. That was our agreement. You're a securitization trustee. Of course you understand the agreement. So where is my cut, mother? I'm, <coughs> excuse me. Hold on. Let me let him finish talking. Market, you're able to receive dividends and all that. Where is my consideration? If there's no value in consideration, it's not a valid contract. Do your research, people. Understand the basics of contract law. We got to get back to this. Okay? Understand it, y'all. I'm going to let y'all know. So, I'm gonna let y'all know. Attention. Pay attention. And every attorney who, either directly or indirectly, buys or is interested in buying any evidence of debt or thing in action with intent to bring suit your property own, is guilty of a misdemeanor. Any violation of the provisions of this section is punishable by imprisonment in the county jail not exceeding six months, or by a fine not exceeding $2,500, $2,500, or by both. Amended by Stats 1976, CH 1125. As you can see there is more than enough evidence here to start an investigation, and if such improprieties and irregularities were to be allowed to continue, if the securitization trustee was allowed to ignore the regulations that are put in place to help curb fraud, this would affect the public interest for which you have been charged to protect. We have tried to communicate with the securitization trustee but the securitization trustee has ignored us. We have made several calls to the securitization trustee's office and the securitization trustee has not returned our calls and slash or any of the mail communications to that office. We require an audit of the account. We require all of the information associated with the trade. We require assistance from your office to put a stop to the violation of the agreement and of our rights. The following address is the contact address. Please label all items as stated below. Please do not deviate from that format. Your mailing address, note I do not include is it called when I do this, but that's just me. It's supposed to be zip code, We're not as is it called. The EEO and foundation because your office is the office who oversees the regulating of such entities, and we are asking that an investigation commence immediately. Also take special notice that we have attempted to file a complaint with the security. Exchange Commission, the Federal Trade Commission, regarding these matters respecting federal violations of rights and law. E.R. C.C. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the gist of the letter. And the issue is, as you see, we're bringing to their attention something that should spark their doing some type of an investigation. Our job is to get the accounting. We're bringing a securities claim. We're telling them we have a right to see the finances. If we're not an investor, then the finances would show we're not an investor. The paperwork would show we're not an investor. You see, this is our property. What right do you have to trade our property? The moment they say we have the right to trade your property because we have an agreement. Yes, if we have an agreement, that's a contract. Agreement spells contract. If we have an agreement, there must be value and consideration. You can't say you have the right to trade the property on the market because you gave us a loan. No, because you're receiving interest payments from us. We're paying you interest. That's your value and consideration. Hold on, y'all. Didn't I just say the same thing on pause? Well, that's just letting y'all know that it ain't going to change. The facts remain the facts. I can't explain it any plainer because I'm not an entertainer. Okay, so y'all hold on. 
We're paying you back the loan plus interest. You don't get to collect more than that because the agreement doesn't allow you to collect more than that. Trading it on the market, now that's something different. So you're not trading the loan on the market, you're trading the mortgage, which is signed after the loan. Ladies and gentlemen, what we didn't tell you in California, and a lot of people didn't think I understood this or knew this because I didn't talk about it, we wanted you to understand in California, and I purchased the home, I went through the closing, so I understood this when I made the comment, I actually purchased two homes, okay? One home, let me tell you this, one home, I just went through escrow and literally kept the home and there was nothing they could do. Now that was the easy part, but then I let the home go, sorry. I was just testing things out. That was way back in 1990, 90, 1990, what year was that? That was 1997. So I was just testing the system out, not helping anybody out, just testing the system out about getting the home. That's how I know a little bit of something, something. But in 2001, I actually purchased the home. When I purchased the home, we signed the paperwork, we signed the loan docs, and then we had to wait for funding. You see, California, they make you sign the loan docs and everything first, and then you have to wait for funding. But what you don't understand is I did another letter explaining to the companies, and I, I'm not going to show you that letter, there's no reason to, because so you have to write a letter to the company letting them know that you are bringing up a securities fraud issue, okay? So I sent it to everybody. Everybody in their grandmama got a copy of this letter, plus the letter where I'm claiming that they're, they've done all of these things, are involved in securities fraud, letting them know that the loan, when you gave the loan initially, the loan had nothing to do with you trading my property in the market or being allowed to trade my property in the market. When I applied for the loan, the loan was only supposed to be whether or not I was approved. You told me I qualified, so I came in and you said I qualified. You said I qualified without putting up any extra collateral. So this was before the home was even in the picture. Since I qualified without any collateral, before the home was even put into play, guess what, homeboy? Y'all can't do that. You can't then make it to where I'm forced to put my home at this, up as collateral because the home has nothing to do with the loan. You can't force me to do that, nor can you force me to turn over power of attorney. This is what they're doing to all of you. They're forcing you to do the power of attorney. Well, guess what? That's called coercion. They cannot coerce you. Then here's where I got them. There is no federal statute and or law which allows them to impose a sanction such as forcing you to give up a right. See, when you are told that you must waive your rights, you are giving up a right. Federal law does not provide that you give up a right in order to get a loan. These are all federally insured loans. You don't get that, do you? All the loans by the banks are federally insured loans. That's how we know mortgage insurance is attached. That's how we know that the government guarantees the loan. Why? Because the government came in with their stupid laws guaranteeing all of these loans. What we're trying to say is you're supposed to be going after the securitization of the account. You go after the trading of the property. Fine, you wanna take this property? Man, this property is 40 years old. You can have that property. Okay, but I want my monies. I'm an investor, where are my monies? And ladies and gentlemen, I promise you, go after the money, follow the money, show me the money, follow the money, show me the money, make them show you that you're not an investor. Make them prove that you're not an investor. You bring up the presumption, he who smelt it, dealt it. So you bring up the presumption. If you bring up the presumption, they have to rebut the presumption. They cannot, when you bring up the presumption, in the way that you see here, okay? So we're gonna let Bobby and Patty take us on out of here. Take us to the hill, Patty and Bobby. Ladies and gentlemen, if you bring up the presumption first, then they're gonna have to disprove it. And don't let them take you off subject. So many of you let them bring up this point and that point and you let a judge tell you, I'm not allowing, excuse me, what do you mean? You're not allowing it. You don't have the authority. You, your opinion doesn't matter here. 
It's whether or not the rules and the law allow it. I'm not looking for your opinion. Are you telling me the court is not allowing it or are you telling me you're not allowing it? You don't have anything to do with this controversy. You're not even the overseer of this controversy. The jury that I've demanded is the overseer of this controversy. Ladies and gentlemen, I can talk to the idiots like that because I'm not gonna pander to them. I'm not gonna curtsy to them. They already know this. I'll give them their respect, but I'm not gonna let them just tell me something. You guys are letting these judges tell you this and tell you that and you're not questioning them. And I'm very, very, very disheartened by that because you're so afraid. And I know you're afraid. They, they put y'all in a state of fear. Remember, they wear black. Black is intimidating. Why do you think the police officers are trained to kill black? Now, how come they don't kill judges? Just kidding. I'm not telling no police officer to go out there and kill nobody's judge. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Uh-uh, don't y'all listen to that. I am not talking about killing no judge. Okay, judges are worthwhile. Yeah, they ain't. Anyway, worthless. I mean, I'm sorry. Him, you know? He he don't know what he's talking about. That he got some problems. Okay. So, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to go into another song. Although I could, but we ain't going to do that. We're going to ask all of you to have a cloak and a smile. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. But I do hope that you guys go after the securitization of your notes. Go after the securitization trustee. Goodbye. Have a cloak and a smile. It's going to restart. I don't want it to restart, so we're going to do it that way. Mm-hmm. We got to skip Jennifer. Got to turn that volume down, y'all. We're not going to do TKO, y'all. I'm trying to get to the lower tier. Nah, can't do that one either. Nah, we're not going to do no close nobody's door. Hey, don't look no further. With Dennis Edwards, we ain't going to do this. Um, we can do Love Hangover, y'all. Because if there's a cure for this, I don't want it. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, as we told you, it's going to be about 40 minutes. Now we're going to do the explaining of this document. We got Diana Ross in the background. But we're going to have to do with Diana is we're going to have to answer the phone. So y'all hold on. We'll be right back. That call was regarding a young lady in Texas who ended up acquiring the home. There's nothing wrong. Everything is actually going all right. I'm just giving some direction as to how to make sure that that's solidified. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. To Securitization Trustee, Deutsche Bank Trust Companies America, ETL. From, your name will go here. Re, notice of change in terms of agreement, Duh. cancellation of assignments, satisfaction of debt obligation, formal complaint of securities law violations, Internal reference number CA 0800552814, April 3rd, 2018. To whom it may concern. The properties located at, property address will go here, for purchase from private homeowners by private homeowners without the attachment of a mortgage. Your organization slash agency foreclosed on this property without the right to do so, knowing that the deed of trust had been satisfied. You are also aware that the property had foreclosure insurance for which you ignored, but the most important aspect of your breach of agreement was the following. Attorneys who have an acquired an interest in our properties, and have somehow attempted to file suit or bring forth the claim of an intention to file suit in violation of state statute will suffer the consequences of violating the law. California Business and Profession Code 6129 Every attorney who, either directly or indirectly, buys or is interested in buying any evidence of debt or thing in action, with intent to bring suit thereon, is guilty of a misdemeanor. Any violation of the provisions of this section is punishable by imprisonment in the county jail not exceeding six months, or by a fine not exceeding $2,500, $2,500, or by both. Amended by Stats 1976, CH 1125. The attorneys you hired actually had an interest in the property in violation of state statute. You are hereby placed on notice that a lawsuit shall be filed against you, not only for the amount of monies you collected as a result of the mortgage insurance, 
but the fact that you and your trust company conspired to sell a property that had a lien placed on it to the county record. That cloud in title was not removed by any court, there was also a statutory judgment on the record with the county recorder which you chose to ignore. The law does not permit you to act in such a way, accompanying this notice is the power of attorneys you will need to recognize and acknowledge the fact that you were the securitization trustee, which means you were the fiduciary having a fiduciary responsibility to the trustee with respects to there being a trust interest holder or investor in the security, you failed to provide the appropriate 1099s, interests, dividends, and slash or other associated information to this investor, we are accusing. You of collusion, constructive fraud, and interfering with the trade of securities on the financial markets along with other improprieties. You are hereby notified that we've contacted the appropriate agencies associated with the securities laws for the state of California and for the federal government regarding your conduct. We require an audit of the account as is our right. We require all of the information associated with the trade as is our right. We require assistance from your office to put a stop to the violation of the agreement and of our rights. The following address is the contact address. Please label all items as stated below. Please do not deviate from that format. Mailing address will go here. The trust is paid. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to pay attention to this section. This is the argument. The main argument, the main point, if there is a point to be had, a point to be generated, this is the main point. Can you get to the point? Shut up. The premium on the mortgage insurance for the properties. The properties had mortgage insurance associated as required by statute and federal law and have not received the benefits of such an investment. All contracts must contain clauses associated with value and consideration. My clients paid the insurance premium ergo, contributed value for the benefit of the lender and beneficiary, and as of yet has not received the consideration required by law. There will be no further warnings, there will be no further notices, you have a total of 21 calendar days to correct the errors, misconceptions, and validate by actual accounting, certified by a licensed accountant at the address above, or we will use every lawful and legal means at our disposal to have you held accountable for the violations of federal as well as state law, the rights of our clients, and public policy. We are contacting your office through the EEO and Foundation because your office is the organization which has accepted responsibility for speaking on behalf of an entity, is associated with the account, and or has attempted to defraud our client. Please do not send non-requested information and slash or communication that does not specifically pertain to the above referenced information or prior communication sent by this office. It will be construed as non-compliance, non-response, and acquiescence to each of the claims contained herein and therein. S slash Eon. Okay. That's that one. Got one more. Got one more bad boy. This is longer. So I want y'all to pay attention. This is longer. This one is to the security litigation trustee, the Thurbertha, the finance institution, and the lender. So y'all just need to understand this go to everybody. And this is where we sit up here and let them know of suspensions. But we warn the attorneys that any collusion, any investment, any association with the actual title to the property or sitting up here trying to claim interest or any type of value in the property is illegal in the state of California. Can't do that. Can't do that. Can't represent yourselves. Can only represent the entity. That's what California thing. California. California IA. Okay, give us one second. We'll do the last letter. Wasn't planning on doing this. Originally, we didn't do this. This is addition. So we're giving you the letters that we've created. And we're adding these letters to the then and now. Then and now. I know it's here and now, but I decided to say then and now. Okay. Anyway. Somebody just tried to click on my phone. Oh, earlier I decided to pause. But. Oh, well, because I was checking a, a text message from someone who says they want to communicate with me tomorrow. And I'm going to let them because that's one of the people I allow to communicate with me. Ah! Hold on one second, ladies and gentlemen. Two, securitization trustee, lender, servicer, financial institution, ETL. From your name or the name of your client will go here. Re, notice of change in terms of agreement, cancellation of assignments. Satisfaction of debt obligation, formal complaint of securities law violations, internal reference number CA 0800-5528-14. April 3rd, 2018. To whom it may concern. It concerns me! Located at, your property addresses will go here, both for purchase from private homeowners by private homeowners without the attachment of a mortgage. 
As you are aware the agreement for the above mentioned properties, application is only specific to your interest associated with the above referenced properties, has been satisfied on behalf of our client, and that obligation with your organizations is hereby declared satisfied. As there is no obligation on the part of our client to allow you to trade their property and slash or their interest on the market without just compensation, and the fact that you have received considerable compensation for the trade of such items on the market and have failed to credit the account as agreed, you're in breach of that agreement. You are hereby ordered to surrender any and all funds and slash or monies and or assets held in escrow, to include files, documents, ledgers, accounting associated with the above account and slash or properties immediately to the address listed below. You are also hereby notified of the change in terms of agreement, of the reverting back to the original terms of the agreement, as well as the original intent and understanding of the grantor, settler, borrower, truster. You are hereby notified that the original loan associated with the above referenced properties have been properly tendered as required by the agreement and tendering statutes. That if you claim or allege to have monies, funds, and slash or otherwise do your interest or the interest of your client you must provide validation of such claims, which shall include a complete accounting, not just a statement of your claim. You are also to provide a power of attorney agreement between you and any representative you delegate responsibility to speak on your behalf, this is non-negotiable. The Satisfaction of Mortgage Act As required by the law, when you receive the funds back equating to the value of the loan, either through the federal government, to the Federal Reserve Bank, or any other entity, you were to then return the original note, the deed to the property, and a certificate certifying that the account was satisfied, you have failed to do that. You were then given notice of this failure and have failed to respond within the time frame allotted by statute, you're in breach of agreement. With respect to the trustees associated with the aforementioned accounts, you had an obligatory duty of care, you are deficient in that responsibility. The account holders otherwise known as trust interest holders and or trustors demanded that you provide a full accounting, as well as interest payments associated with the trade of this investment, and you have failed to do so, you are hereby relieved of duty immediately and notify the legal action will ensue against you for your dereliction of duty as well as diminished capacities. Regarding financial institutions and lenders. The trustors applied for a personal loan, oftentimes referred to as a home loan, but only in name and not actual substance. The loan was acquired, and the proceeds were used by the trustors to purchase real property, see the original buyer-seller agreement. The lending financial institution extorted the trustors by claiming without validation and slash or verification in violation of the Truth in Lending Act, that they somehow needed to place the home as collateral for the loan. Whereas the facts are clear that the loan was approved based on the credit rating, credit profile, and credit history of the trustors, and that the collateral was only necessary with reference to trading the property on the market, please note that the property could not be collateral for the loan because one cannot leverage that which they do not retain the rights to leverage that is the home was not acquired until after the loan was received, once again see the buyer-seller agreement. You as an organization, and slash or subsequent organizations through attachments, were required to apply any and all interest payments and or revenues due the trust to slash borrowers as a result of the trading of their property on the market to any presumed balance of debt obligation, we have no record of this being done, and to avoid a claim slash charge of constructive fraud and conspiracy we will need you to provide proof of such application immediately through certified validation of accounting. I'm telling such time as you have complied with this your complaint, your claim, your allegations shall remain in dispute, and if you continue to ignore the rights of my client we will bring a suit against you for the issues detailed here in this notice. Attorneys who haven't acquired an interest in our properties, and have somehow attempted to file suit or bring forth the claim of an intention to file suit in violation of state statute will suffer the consequences of violating the law. California Business and Profession Code 6,129 Every attorney who, either directly or indirectly, buys or is interested in buying any evidence of debt or thing in action, with intent to bring suit thereon, is guilty of a misdemeanor. Any violation of the provisions of this section is punishable by imprisonment in the county jail not exceeding six months, or by a fine not exceeding $2,500, $2,500, or by both. Amended by Stats 1976, CH 1125. We require an audit of the account. We require all of the information associated with the trade, we require assistance from your office to put a stop to the violation of the agreement and of our rights. The following address is the contact address, please label all items as stated below, please do not deviate from that format. Your mailing address will go here. The trust has paid the premium on the mortgage insurance for the properties, the properties had mortgage insurance associated as required by statute and federal law, and have not received the benefits of such an investment. All contracts must contain clauses associated with value and consideration, my clients paid the insurance premium ergo, contributed value for the benefit of the lender and beneficiary, and as of yet has not received the consideration required by law.
Then there is the issue of the financial institution somehow requiring a party to place a property of which they do not have ownership of, as it had not been placed in their possession at the time of the signing of the contract, as collateral, when they had no authority to do so as an action avoid contract. We are challenging the validity of the contract which required a party to surrender their rights in order to obtain that for which they had a right that is to a personal individual loan. The financial institution gave a personal loan demanding that in order for the loan to be approved the borrower had to sign away rights, this is a violation of the Truth in Lending Act and a violation of federal law. There is no law requiring anyone to sign away rights, and or to agree to waive rights in order to acquire that which is governed by federal law. There will be no further warnings, there will be no further notices, you have a total of 21 calendar days to correct the errors, misconceptions, and validate by actual accounting, certified by a licensed accountant at the address above, or we will use every lawful and legal means at our disposal to have you held accountable for the violations of federal as well as state law, the rights of our clients, and public policy. We are contacting your office through the EEO and Foundation because your office is the organization which has accepted responsibility for speaking on behalf of an entity, is associated with the account, and or has attempted to defraud our client. Please do not send non-requested information and slash or communication that does not specifically pertain to the above referenced information or prior communication sent by this office. It will be construed as non-compliance, non-response, and acquiescence to each of the claims contained herein and therein. Eon. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. It really is that simple. These are the three letters that are going out. We have the complaint going out to the regulatory company. Now, a copy of this is also being sent to the SEC, the FTC, and the CFPB. Everybody gets letters. They get a copy of all the letters. We're going to administrative process their anuses to death, but we're bringing up securitization. Attack securitization, go after securitization, 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 securitization. That's your issue. That's your sludge hammer. Why? Because nobody has gone after the securitization of their mortgage. Now, we're going to show it to you one more time so you can get it because you guys are not understanding. When they take and trade your security, we're going to go here to the, the geeks, okay? When they take and trade your mortgage on the market, you don't understand. You're giving them permission. So let's do this. Uh, I'm in the wrong. All right. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. So that was just that section up here. I don't want to read because I'm tired. Tired, I tell you. I'm just tired, y'all. I'm tired. I'm tired. Copy. We were going to do, if there's a cure for this, I don't want it. Don't want it. Because she's got the sweetest hangover, y'all. It's impossible to have a sweet swing, swing over, okay? That's right. I said swang over. Swang. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to get over. Somebody help her get over it. I don't want to get, I don't want to get. Hey, Diana, you and your, um, hold on. We're going to get with y'all in a minute. I, I, Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, since I was a child, I've loved hangover. Love hangover. <laughs> I love hangover. Love hangover. It's called love hangover, y'all. Those of y'all who didn't know. Okay, there ain't no more at the bottom. It's just up here. So we're going to start with this reading right here because I don't have the browser open with this that has the reading. A security trustee http colon slash slash www.wisegeek.com slash what hyphen is hyphen a hyphen trustee dot htm is a person or institution who holds securities in trust for a syndicate of creditors in a financial transaction like a securitization http colon slash slash www. It's a hyperlink. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Securitization dot htm. There are a number of reasons why debtors may choose to use a trust http colon slash slash www.wisegeek.com slash what hyphen is hyphen and hyphen a hyphen trust dot htm for raising capital and other types of finance transactions. Most commonly, this approach is used when there are so many creditors involved that giving each an interest in individual securities to secure the debt would be impracticable. Debtors can put a number of different assets in trust for the purpose of securing a credit transaction. This can include titles to real estate and other assets, investments, bank accounts, and so forth. The security trustee is responsible for administering the trust and managing the contents responsibly on behalf of both the debtor and the creditors. Each of the creditors involved in the transaction has a financial interest in the trust, rather than in individual assets. If the transaction goes smoothly and the debtor discharges the debt, 
the trust is dissolved and title to the contents is returned to the debtor. If there is a problem, the security trustee is empowered to foreclose on the trust, liquidating it and distributing the proceeds to the creditors. Creditors receive shares in accordance with their interests, someone who holds 50% of a trust, for example, would get half the proceeds of foreclosure http colon slash slash www.wisegeek.com slash what hyphen is hyphen a hyphen foreclosure dot htm sale after fees have been paid, including fees to the security trustee. Add. For creditors, there are advantages and disadvantages to being involved in a syndicate with a security trustee holding the assets. This can be safer in some settings, as the trustee can act very quickly to address non-payment of debt and other issues. On the other hand, having to share interests with other creditors can reduce the amount of payout if the trust has to be liquidated. The security trustee is responsible for ensuring that the shared interests do not exceed 100% of the trust and for keeping the assets physically secure while the trust is in force to prevent losses, but trustees cannot control market forces and the value of assets in trust may fall over the lifetime of the trust. Secured transactions can be very large and it is not uncommon to see financial institutions or private firms acting as security trustees, rather than individuals. Managing a large trust can require a number of skills in addition to the services of support personnel http colon slash slash www.wisegeek.com slash what hyphen r hyphen personnel htm to monitor the trust and stay apprised of any developments with the potential to impact the trust or the relationship between debtors, creditors, and trustee. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's do this again. Where did they say there is a law that requires you to place your debt in a securitization trust? You see, a trust is an agreement and you would have to agree to be placed into that trust. So we're going to do one more. And this is the last, this is the final one, y'all. Final call. Okay, I think that's the last part right there. Right there. I like that when you do that right there. Let's see, go all the way down to the bottom, to the bottom, to the bottom. And what I have to do is this. Oh no, I can't do that. I apologize, y'all. I gotta undo that. Undo. I said undo that. I gotta do it this way. See that right there and that right there. That's how I gotta do it. Cause you know how they kept saying hyperlink, hyperlink, underscore, underscore, ba, da, 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 b, b, b. Bop, 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 the doo ba da da do blue moon. Okay, because it did all of that, I had to, come on now, copy. Okay, now we're going to go back and back. There we go. All right, we take you, get rid of you, and we come here. We go up here, we go here, and we get rid of this ad because that means there's an ad there. We don't want the ad. We want the subtraction. <laughs> he said subtraction. He's playing on work. Okay. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Securitization is the process of pooling or bundling various types of debt instruments for the purpose of selling the instruments for cash. As part of the process, the combined value of the bundle of debt instruments is used to convert the pool into a bond issue that can in turn be purchased by investors. Generally, a trustee makes the initial purchase of the bundle, then sells the bond to one or more investors. The type of debt instruments involved in securitization do not have to be similar debts in order to be included in the bundle. A securitization deal may include such varied debts as mortgages, car loans, or credit card debt. Essentially, the main qualification for inclusion is that the debt instruments included in the bundle will continue to generate income from the payments received on the principal of the debt as well as any interest that is applied to the outstanding balance. A mortgage pool strategy of this type is relatively common. Banks, finance companies, and investor consortiums often engage in the process of securitization. For the individual debtors, a transfer in the ownership of the debt may be completely transparent, or require nothing more than changing the address where the payments are remitted. Generally, a securitization project does not lead to an increase in interest rates. The beauty of using a process of securitization to create an MBs or mortgage-backed security is that the investment will generate a regular flow of revenue over an extended period of time. The investors receive this cash flow from the payments on the interest and principal made by borrowers. The MBs may involve both residential and commercial mortgages. As with any asset-backed security, there is some degree of risk to the investor. Because the bond issues are backed with debt instruments, there is always the chance that one or more debtors will default on the loans, mortgages, or credit card debt. However, investors who regularly include securitization investments as part of their business practices usually take steps to minimize the potential loss from a default, 
sometimes including some sort of assurance on the part of the trustee in the terms and conditions that apply to the sale. This can help to minimize the chances of holding an illiquid asset and incur a loss on the venture. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, the process is that there are investors involved in your mortgage. There are investors involved in your loan. No, there are no investors involved in your loan. You're getting a personal loan from a bank. The investors get involved because the bank asks for your permission to trade that agreement between you and it on the market. Do you think they can do that without permission? I don't think they can do that without permission. I think they need your permission. I know they need your permission. The law says they need your permission. The only way they can trade your mortgage on the market and profit from that is if you were part of the agreement. Because the agreement is that they are paid back. Nothing in the agreement says that they get to take, pay attention, it's an agreement. That means more than one party. Let's see if we can do the research on agreement. Agreement. Hold on. Harmony. Our accordance in opinion or feeling a position or a result of agreeing. Government failed to reach an agreement. A negotiated or typically legally binding agreement between parties as a cause or course of action. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an agreement. That means there are two parties involved. In order for the banks to take that agreement and to do something that is not spelled out initially in the agreement. Well, what's the original agreement? The loan. The loan agreement does not carry with it oh, and we're gonna trade your loan on the market because there is no law requiring that to happen. You see, they can't make that a condition of the loan because then there will be an issue of truth in lending. Can you imagine if every company had to legally notify you that we're going to trade your loan in the market and when we do this, that means we are going to make a profit and you can't see a penny of it? They can't do that. Again, that's why, let's do this. Let's do contract. We want the basic contract. Now we got basic agreement tendencies. Okay. Now let's do says a legally binding agreement contract definition. Okay. Now let's do now you see how I put definition of contract up here contract definition and then let's say Turn upside down, you're turning me. Intensively, round and round, you're turning me. All right. Consideration is a concept of legal value in connection with contracts. It is anything of value promised to another when making a contract. It takes the form of money, physical objects, services, promises, actions, abstinence from future action and much more. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry I hit the wrong button. I'm gonna undo that right now, as soon as I find my mouse. Where you at, mouse? There you go, mouse. It won't go. All right, go now, action center. Action, cave! Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, where there is consideration, there must be value. The term consideration refers to something of value given to something in return for goods, services, and blah, blah, blah. So what you give the loan, uh, the bank, the bank gives you a loan. What is it that you give the bank? Interest payments. You're promised to pay with interest. That's the value and consideration. There is no more consideration, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, there's no, well, we get to trade your property on the market. That's an addition. No, they're not allowed to trade your property on the market or the contract on the market. Why? Because their consideration is the interest payments. That's why they charge you interest. That's why there's principal balance and interest balance. Okay, value and consideration go hand in hand. 
So that's how we know that them trading the property on the market cannot be permissible under the general terms of a contract because that's an additional element. Okay? Rules of consideration and contract. Elements and case law. Okay? So do yourselves a favor. This is study.com forward slash academy. Okay? And basically... Uh, Study.com, HTTP, this is not www, this is not www, this is not www, study.com, forward slash academy, forward slash lessons, forward slash rules, hyphen of, hyphen consideration, hyphen in, hyphen contract, hyphen law, hyphen element, hyphen, I don't know if it's in case, I got to see, elements, hyphen case, hyphen examples, okay? If you want to come to this page, that's how you're going to get here. Okay? Hey, they got a video. Value, value. They got a video. Hold on, Diana. That's when she was still trying to prove to everybody that she was young. They what? say a rose is a rose is a rose. Is a rose. For the most part, that is true. Hey, Rose. Sorry, From Rose. Contract law. A contract is not always a contract. Whoa, say no more. A contract is not always a contract. Now you can see why I placed in the document that if you do not receive your consideration for the value of the trade, because that's a separate contract. Remember, the note, the mortgage, the loan docs, those are three separate contracts. Each must have its own value and consideration. Are you now starting to get this? Why this is so important. Hold on. Come words, on, Rose. A contract needs six elements to be considered enforceable. It must contain an offer made by the promisor, an acceptance of the offer by the promisee, consideration in the form of money or a promise to do or not do something, mutuality between parties to carry out the promises of the contract, capacity of both parties in mind and age, and legality of terms and conditions. Thank you, Rose. Focus, we will focus on consideration or an exchange of bargained for promises between two or more parties. Consideration, as we learned, is simply something of value exchanged between Exchanging. parties. Exchanging! To, to qualify consideration, it must be legally sufficient and bargained for. Interest That's rates. Say, the value the promisor places on the consideration must be of the same value the promisee places on performance of the contract terms. In other words, both parties want to know what's in it for me. To illustrate this, if John, the promisor, offers Jamal, the promisee, $200 to repair his car and Jamal accepts, the $200 is consideration or the value for the repair and performance. Hold on. Value and performance. Now, we ain't talked about that yet, but let's do this. Let's do the math, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, the bank gave you money. Okay, you promised to pay them back, but that's okay. You're just returning like for like. However, what is the benefit to the bank of them giving you the loan? They get to charge you interest. <laughs> that's right. They get their money back plus interest that's the contract nothing in the contract says that you have to permit them to trade your contract on the market that's a contract between the two of you you both own that contract if you did not specifically agree to allow your contract to be traded on the market and you did that's a separate contract people the mortgage is separate from the promise to pay but the mortgage must follow the note. The note must follow the mortgage. And it doesn't. That's why they separate it. Because when they trade it on the market, they do something known as conversion. Oh, it's a convertible. Oh, I love convertibles, especially when they go underneath the back of trucks. <laughs> it's called a decapitation machine. Sorry. Sorry. Anyway, let's get back to Rose. There are conditions consideration has to meet to have legally sufficient value. A party cannot promise to do something where there is already a legal obligation to do so. A police officer cannot collect a reward for the capture and arrest of an outlaw. The promisee must perform an act not ordinarily obligated to perform. A police officer cannot contract independent security services for his neighborhood while he is on duty at his regular job. 
he has a pre-existing obligation to secure the neighborhood. Finally, for consideration to be of legally sufficient value, a party may refrain from exercising a right that the party is entitled to, like giving up the right to sue someone in exchange for restitution. Did you hear that? Hold on. Did you hear that? It says that you can refrain. Interesting. You could refrain. Again, you don't have to have your property traded on the market. Hold on. Let's say that in fixing the car, Jamal dented John's fender. Jamal apologizes and tells Sorry, bro. that he will fix the dent for free and also give him a 10% discount on the original repair. Thank you, bro. If John accepts the deal, he cannot later sue Jamal for denting the car. Consideration must also be bargained for, meaning there is an exchange of promise and something of value where both parties gain a reward. Hold on. You trade my property on the market. Where is my benefit? Where's my reward for letting you do that? Okay. That's what I've been saying, people. So thank you, Rose, for explaining that to everybody because it's harder for me to explain it to them because I already know these things. But you, you took the time to put together a video here at yourstudy.com to explain to people the difference between, pay attention, what's in it for me. There has to be value. That's what the what's in it for me. And you receive a detriment in the contract. It's real simple. Let's say John and Jamal are now negotiating the sale of a bicycle that was displayed in the auto repair shop. John wants to take up biking, so he offers. Uh-oh. Nobody asked you for that? Wait, look at that. It says you must create an account? Register for a free trial? Rose, I'm now hating you. I am now hating you, Rose. Rose, I was going to give you a lot of credit for explaining that to my peeps. Uh-uh. Hold on, Rose. How you going to do us like that? Cop, cop. How you going to, Rose? What, what's the wrong with you, Rose? Going to sit up here and just take us? Uh-uh. Hold on. Hold, hold on. Hold on, y'all. We going to go to YouTube upload. See, this is the YouTube upload segment. Let's freshen that up. And we're going to take this right here and we're going to watch this, y'all. Watch what I do. we going to, come on now. We're going to open in a new window. Open in a new window. Open in a new window. Come on, open in a new window. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to look for this video on YouTube or we're going to look for it on a different channel. Uh oh. Okay, I was about to say I can't open YouTube. Come on, where you at, YouTube? There we go. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Hashtag, I'm stupid as a night show host. Okay, let's see. We're going to do it that way for now. Contracts. Hey, what is consideration? Okay, somebody did a video. U.S. law is essential. I think this is the same, almost the same video. Hold on. Where you at? Hold on. Got to go over here. Let's do that. Now, let's see if we get the picture. I can't see the picture, y'all. It ain't showing me the picture. Oh, no, that's a different picture. Same type of animation. Contracts. Perplexing. No. Contracts. I wanted to see the rest of Rose contracts but ladies and gentlemen offer an acceptance please understand value and consideration there the elements of the contract is what you're going to find with people who do contracts what i'm going to suggest to you all is go and look at the basic understanding of contract so you can understand the argument don't just follow my lead follow the argument we got one more video to do this is it how, how long is this video? Two minutes? Two minutes? Two minute mark. I'm not your video, mark. We will discuss consideration and the formation of a contract. Consideration is one of three elements that are needed to make a contract. Roll says six elements. elements are like ingredients. <gasps> Think of the ingredients Water. you might need for a soup. Stop. See, they, they involve, and they in, in stocks. And changing ingredients, then we don't have soup. Our elements or ingredients for a contract are offer, acceptance, and consideration. But see, what consideration, there has to be way value. To understand consideration is that each party has to give something to get something. And to get something. Value and consideration go hand in hand. And just make sure that what a party is giving is not something that party already has to do. 
Yeah. Like that's what she was saying, like a police officer. He can't sit up there and wear his uniform and say, I'm going to protect the neighborhood, but each of y'all got to pay me like they do in New York. Okay. You got to pay to play that type of thing. Uh, can't have that type of contract. That's why people get in a lot of trouble. So you can't charge something, charge somebody for something that they already have an obligation to do. You don't have an obligation to trade your property on the market. When they want to trade your property in the market, that's a separate contract, a separate agreement. And you guys need to understand, you need to highlight the fact, separate contract that is not part of the original agreement. That is a separate agreement, separate and distinct. The deed of trust is separate from the mortgage. Okay, it is not the same contract. You cannot associate the two. If one is invalid, it invalidates the other because they need the two to be hinged upon, to be relied upon. Let's see her throw her little kissy wissy. For example, let's say Peter asks Sally to paint his fence and Sally says no. That's not a problem. Sally doesn't have to paint anybody's fence. Why would you and ask Peter her to paint your have fence? To pay anybody if he doesn't want to. But Peter's fence is not going to get painted. <laughs> <laughs> now let's say Peter and Sally agree that Sally will paint Peter's fence for $100. Now we have a contract. Yay! Because now we have an offer. You're so considerate, Peter. Sally, you're so considerate, Peter too. Peter is promising to do something he doesn't have to do. Sally, to because I don't have to pay you, I'm going to wait till you paint the Sally's fence, and then I'm not going to pay you, and then we can go to court. Paint his fence. Each party is giving something, and each party is getting something in return. Value and consideration! Keep in mind that the amount of consideration in the United States usually does not matter. It doesn't matter! Let's say Sally asks Peter to paint her car in return for $5. A court will probably not worry whether or not $5 is enough consideration. Each party is promising to do something in exchange for the other party's promise. Uh -huh. And if we have an offer, acceptance, and consideration. See, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the first thing that they're going to say is that, well, when we offered to do that, when we offered to give you the loan, we made a condition on the fact that we wouldn't give you the loan if you didn't put the home as, as a collateral once you acquired the home. And what you get to say is, I'm sorry, you can't do that. Because now you made a stipulation. A stipulation is not authorized by law. See, your loan was federally governed by federal law. And by federal law, you can't make a right and convert it into a privilege. See, when you said that I could only get the home if I mortgage the property after acquiring the home, you can't do that. The law doesn't allow you to do that. You see, because at that point, then it becomes a capital gains for you. And then we have other tax laws, but the IRS classifies the loan as a personal loan. Since the IRS classifies the loan as a personal loan, we can only focus on the loan aspect. That contract, see, that's a separate contract. We can't add this contract to that contract without making sure we understand the nature of the contract. So people, everybody else has been going in there arguing all eight contracts when you only are in there arguing one contract. That is their securitization. You're trading my property in the market. Where's my value? Remember, each contract must have its own consideration and value. Let's consider letting him finish. We have a contract. If you'd like to discuss contracts or any other matter related to U.S. law, stop by the message board and please visit my blog. Also, get out of here. Enough. Enough. We don't need to hear the rest of that stuff. You're not here to advertise on my channel. You better go advertise on your own channel. Oh, that's what he was doing, right? He was advertising on his own channel. Oh, we're in incognito mode. I'm incognito. I've never been there before. I'm incognito. Who could ask for much more? Okay, that's the video we just went to. And they tell us we got to sign up and become temporary members. That's one of those sites where you got to pay to play. I don't want to pay to play to be on somebody's site. So let's find our value and consideration. Hey, look at this. 
Elements of law. Hmm. Interesting. Let's see. I'm just looking for something simple. I wanted Rufus and Doofus, but we ain't gonna be able to find them. I was hoping to find the same video, but we ain't gonna be able to find them. But we're gonna be able, you know we're gonna be able to find y'all? See, study.com, same thing. Study.com, take us right back there, and we end up having to not watch the whole video. I, I just thought, this is what I was thinking. I was thinking it, that the video was so basic, so simple, then it was enough. But I don't want to be a part of it. Don't want to be around it. Don't want. Don't need to. Don't need to, y'all. So we're gonna go back to nothing. We don't need to because we've already explained it. We just used that information to prove to you that what was being said to you was the facts to begin with. So again, ladies and gentlemen, to break this down simple, they're trading the property on the market. Quit focusing on all of those other things that they gotten everybody so distracted with. The person foreclosing on your property is only one person. Do you guys know who is the one that's foreclosing on your property? It's the securitization trustee. Okay? That's who's foreclosing on your property. It's the securitization trustee. So since the securitization trustee is foreclosing on your property, I can close you. We don't need you. You're you're a secondary window. Since the securitization trustee is the one foreclosing on your property, okay, then you know that it has everything to do with the investment and the investors. It has nothing to do with the loan, has nothing to do with the loan, has nothing to do with the loan. They claim it has something to do with the loan, but hold on. Sorry, it can't have anything to do with the loan because the mortgage is not associated with the loan. And the court will say that, blah, 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 blah. And you say, oh, no, wait, hold on. We got to go to the mechanics of a loan. When I applied for the loan, they asked me that I needed to give them my social security number so they could run the credit. They ran my credit and they told me I was approved for a loan. This was without putting anything up for collateral. Plus, in order to get the loan, they if there was something needed for collateral, were required under the pay attention, pay attention, because none of y'all be paying attention to this, the Truth in Lending Act to spell it out in plain, simple language. They didn't do that. No, it was only after I got the loan that they wanted me to put something up for collateral. I could not promise under contract law to put something up as co for consideration that I did not own. Are you guys understanding it? Remember, Bob couldn't promise to do something that was incapable for Bob to do. One cannot be made to do the impossible. You cannot put up a home for which you have no ownership rights over as collateral for anything. So you could not put up the home until you actually owned it until the other party was paid and you had the keys in your hand. That ownership was a separate contract between you and the owner of that property, which means the only thing you were doing with the bank was applying for a loan. Their consideration and value was the interest rates they got to charge you for paying the loan back. And what was the other consideration? That the government, the United States, guarantees that loan at its par value, okay? That was their consideration. They have a separate agreement with the government to facilitate that loan for you, okay? So now that everybody and their grandfather know what they think they know and they should know and they don't know, ladies and gentlemen, my hope is that you guys go after the securitization trustee, go after the securitization trustee, go after the securitization trustee. Have a coconut smile. See you in a while. Goodbye, all. Bye-bye. Where is he at? What's he doing? Adios.